Coding a system to store dialogue and structure your game's narrative can be hard. In this video, we're going to code this visual novel demo using Juju Adams' Chatterbox, a game maker implementation of Yarn Spinner. Yarn Spinner is a tool for writing game dialogue. You can think about it like a programming language for writers. Structure your dialogue like a screenplay, and then link it to your game with variables and custom functions. Chatterbox can then open your yarn files and allows you to pass them inside your GameMaker game. The great thing about this combination of tools is that you can write all of your dialogue outside of GameMaker in any tool that supports editing yarn files. Crochet is what we'll be using. It's an online tool that allows you to write dialogue in nodes and then link them up. With this toolset, if your dev team has a dedicated writer, they won't need to ever learn GameMaker if they don't want to. By the way, I'll be using the latest version, 2.10.2, which is updated for version 2022 of GameMaker, the long-term support version. First, I want to showcase Crochet. So just head to faultyfunctions.github.io forward slash crochet, and you're gonna see a big canvas with one node in the middle. You have some system tools in the top left and some canvas tools in the bottom right, as well as search functionality in the top right. You can pan around the canvas by holding the middle mouse button and dragging. If you double click the node, the editor pops up and we can start writing our first scene. I'm going to start by initializing the value by using a custom function that we'll establish in GameMaker later. So for now, just put bg0 and enclose that into less than and greater than characters like so. Zero will be the image index of the background sprite we're going to draw. Now I'm going to write out my dialogue. Check out how I use the character name and colon, which I can later interpret in GameMaker to show that the boy is speaking. Then each option is marked by an arrow, and the dialogue belonging to each option is indented. Now I'm going to use the jump action to go to another node. If you write an action to jump to a node that doesn't exist, it will automatically be created. After this last option, I'm also going to add an if statement that will only show this option if we've not visited option C. So if we select this option and then return to this node, the option will no longer be there. If we click out of this node, we can see that there are now three new nodes. Inside of these, I'll write out some placeholder dialogue, which will say where we are, change the background, and then send us back to the start node. Finally, we can just click export, yarn file, and save that to wherever. Next, let's get the package from GitHub. Scroll down, click download the .yymps, then click on the .yymps. Open GameMaker, go to Tools and select Import Local Package. Now navigate to that .yymps file and click Add All, then Import. You should have a new folder in your asset browser, and basically we can leave that alone, though you might want to look in there if you're doing something more advanced than I am in this video. The next step is to import the visual assets. The sprites for this demo will be linked in the description. Just create a new sprite called characters and import these two character images. Make sure that the sprites are aligned to the bottom center. Then create a sprite called backgrounds and import these four background images. We're also going to create a font just so our demo looks nice. I'm going to use a size 24 MS Gothic, but use whatever you want. Before we get into coding the dialog system, we need to set up some functions, which I'll do in one big function script. First, we need a simple wrap function, which will take a value, and if it's bigger than the max, return the min, and if it's less than the min, return the max. Otherwise, just return the value as is. We're going to use this to wrap around our options. So if we've selected option zero and we try to go back one, we'll select the last option instead of option minus one, which doesn't exist. Next, and this is completely optional, but makes the code neater in my opinion, is draw rectangle center. This is basically draw rectangle, but instead of defining the four corners, we define the center point and its width and height. We're also going to pass in a color and an alpha value, making sure that we reset both after. After this, create a function called background set index. This takes an array, and the reason for this is that Chatterbox gets values from functions as arrays, even if there's only one value. For example, in bg0, that will send GameMaker an array with zero as the only value in it. Then we can use this value to set the background index of our background layer. 
Our final function is again optional, but saves us repeating these two lines of code a few times. All it does is set the node variable to the current node of our chatterbox, and then get the text of this node. Now that all of our functions have been created, we can make an object to control the dialog system. First, we need to create an event to initialize chatterbox and set variables. In this event, we're going to load the .yarn file we created earlier. Then, we'll add a function to it. This tells chatterbox to call background set index when it finds the background function in the yarn file. Next, we need to create a chatterbox and store the reference to it. We're going to use this later to navigate through our dialog. Now we can jump to the start node, and then we can call our update function, which sets the current node and text. Also set option index, which tells us which option we're on to zero. Then create an array called size. The first value will be the scale of the sprite for the character who's not speaking, the second for the character who is speaking. Likewise, create an array called color, which tells GameMaker to darken the sprite whichever character is not speaking. Create a step event now and start by getting the number of options we currently have. We're going to use the function chatbox is waiting to see if we're waiting for the user to progress the dialog and if we've pressed space. If both of these are true, then we can continue in our chatterbox and update our node and text values. However, if we're not waiting and the count is not equal to zero, that means that there are options being presented to the player. Here, we can get user input for the up and down arrow keys being pressed. This local variable key will be one if down is pressed, minus one if up is pressed, and zero if neither are pressed. Next, we're gonna move option index based on that key value. But a problem we run into is that if one of our options cannot be selected, we need to know to skip over it. How we get around that is by saying option index plus equals key, and normally repeating it once, but repeating it twice if the if statement of the option we're about to select is false. This means that we move twice to skip over options that we can't select. Another thing we need to do instead of simply adding to option index is setting it with our wrap function so that if we're one over the amount of options we have, or one below zero, we wrap back around. Now we check for the spacebar being pressed, select the current option, reset option index, and update the node and text variables. Finally, we check if the chatterbox is stopped, basically if we run out of content, and if so, I'm going to destroy this object. Lastly, in the draw event, we're going to draw the character sprites, the text, and our options. This is unfortunately the longest event, but that's only because we want the demo to look good. Of course, you can handle all the visuals in any way you want. The first thing we'll do is set our font to the font we created before, and set our vertical alignment to the middle. Next, we'll define local variables for the horizontal text margin and character margin. Now check if the variable chatterbox is indeed a chatterbox, and if the current text is undefined. We need to check this so that we're not drawing anything if there's no text. We can use the function chatterbox get content speaker to see if me is currently talking. Now we can draw the player character sprite, which is the first image in the character sprite. We'll draw it at the character margin and bottom of the room, then set its x and y scale to whatever value is stored in the size array at the position of the local variable me. Basically, if me is the current speaker, the value will be 1, so that the player will be drawn at the larger size. Otherwise, the value will be 0, so the player will be drawn at the smaller size. We're using the same concept for the sprite's blend color, and then we just want to draw the sprite at full opacity. For the sprite of the other character, we want to do the same thing, but draw it at room width minus the character margin, and use not me for the value so that this character is highlighted whenever me is not the current speaker. Next, we're going to create the local variable yy, which is where we'll draw the text and also where we'll draw our text box. So use our custom function draw rectangle center and pass the center as room width over 2 and yy. Then pass the size, make sure it's not only an outline, set it to black and 50% opacity. We can also set our text's horizontal alignment using a ternary operator so that if the current speaker is me, then the text is left aligned, otherwise it's right aligned. We also need to set the local variable xx using a ternary operator so that if me is talking, we draw it at the text margin, otherwise we draw it at room width minus the text margin. Now we can just draw the text value at xx and yy. 
Finally, we're going to check if there are any options, and if so, align our text to the center and set the width and height of our text boxes for the options. Now, loop through all the options using a for loop and check if the current options if statement is true. Next, set xx to the center of the room and yy to room height over 6 multiplied by i plus 2. Because we know that there are only ever three options in our yarn file, we can basically split the room into six and then draw the options at positions two, three, and four to basically vertically center our options. Next, use these values to draw our text boxes. Now set icon to the arrow if we're drawing the selected option. Also get the option text using the function chatterbox get option. And finally draw the icon plus the option text at xx and yy. At last, we can create a room. I'm just gonna make sure it's the same size as our background sprite. Then I'm gonna set the background to the sprite and place the control object somewhere on the instances layer above. Just before we run the game, at the top of the asset browser, click the hamburger icon, select included files and click open in Explorer. Make sure that your .yarn file you created is in this folder. Now we can run the game and we should see that the other character sprite is big and light and he's saying, where are you going? We have three options presented to us, and we can cycle through these and select one. Then it swaps out the background and gives us some new text from the new node. Then we go back to the first node, and if we go to the third option, check out how the option disappears when we go back again, and how it doesn't interfere with our option navigation. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. If you've been following along and implementing this for yourself, I hope you're happy with the result and understand how everything works. If not, please leave a comment and I'll endeavor to fix a bug or explain myself better. If you make anything cool, make sure to share it in the comments. Chatterbox is a really powerful tool and part of its power comes from the fact that it's just an implementation of the Yarn narrative design language. Yarn Spinner has been used in a bunch of big professional games and you can look at some of these to see the full extent of its capabilities. I've really only scratched the surface here, so get creative. If you want to see more of these kinds of videos, please subscribe and click the notification bell. Make sure to leave a comment about the video, about my code, or with any ideas for future topics you'd like to see covered on this channel. That's all from me, I'll see you in the next video.